Good Shabbos, everyone. Welcome to St. Kilda Shul's Kabbalat Shabbat service. I'm Rabbi Hillel Nagel. This week, we read the Sedra of Baalotcha, where the Torah gives instructions to Aharon Kohen Gadol, Aaron, the high priest, to light the menorah in the Mishkan. And when Aharon lit the menorah, the Torah tells us that he did it, Ka'asher Tziva Hashem et Moshe, just like Hashem commanded Moshe. The Torah tells us he followed the instructions very carefully. And of course, the obvious question is, why would we think for one second that Aaron would not follow the instructions of Hashem? Rashi explains, the reason the Torah tells us that he followed the instructions was lahagid shvacha shel Aaron shleishina, to tell us the greatness of Aaron that he did not change. The Sfas Emes explains as follows. The Sfas Emes tells us that when we do a mitzvah for the first time, for example, the first time we put on tefillin, or light Shabbos candles, or maybe even coming to shul after many years of restrictions, we're excited, we're happy. The first time for anything is amazing. But if we keep doing it over and over again, sometimes it loses that spark of excitement, and it becomes just like our regular part of daily life. But the Torah is telling us here that Aaron did the mitzvah just like Hashem had commanded, just like the first time he did it. And for the 39 years that he lit the menorah on a daily basis, every time he lit it, he was excited. And it's a message for us that whenever we do mitzvot, we should also be excited. We should be happy that we have the opportunity and the abilities to do good deeds, to do mitzvot, and that should make us happy and excited, just like the first time we did it. The Premish Lana Rebbe explains another aspect of Aaron not changing. And he says that even though Aaron became the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, one of the greatest leaders of the Jewish nation, he didn't change. He remained humble. He was still able to relate to everyday people on their level and help them. In fact, he was one of the leaders that helped people when they were having an argument. He showed them both sides and made peace between them. This is also shown in the message of the menorah. The menorah, as we know, had seven branches, three on the right, three on the left, and one in the middle. And each of the flames of those branches pointed towards the middle, which obviously pointed up towards heaven. And it shows us that even though sometimes we disagree with each other, we have different approaches, sometimes we're right wing, others are left wing, it doesn't matter, provided we all aim towards the same common goal of Torah values and mitzvot, that will bring peace to the world, and of course, we can be an or, a light unto the nations. Wishing you all a happy and peaceful Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. It's now my pleasure to pass on to Chazan Bretke, who will lead us in the Kabbalat Shabbat service, followed by some words from Rabbi Gleisman. A very good Shabbos. Shalom everybody, welcome. Thank you very much, Rabbi Hillel, for your words of inspiration as always. Tonight we're going to be doing an abridged Kabbalat Shabbat service. We'll do some of the Psalms together, um, some of the readings together, and we will end with L'Charudi, because that's when officially after that Shabbat comes in, and obviously we can't use electronics anymore. So I'm going to be governing tonight from the Art Scroll Sidur, and I'm starting off on page 308. With Psalm 95, the psalm in which we welcome the Shabbat, the Chun Ranana. <laughs> Shir Chadash, 
Shirul Adonai Kolaretz. Page 310. Yismichu Ashamayim Etage Lauretz. Yireamayam Umelo Yalusalayim Echol Asherbo. Az Yirra. Lifne Adonai Kiva, Kiva Liyataretz, Yishpod Peyevel Betzedek, Ve'amim Mevunato. Adonai Mevun Agel Aretz, Yizbchuim Rabim. Bottom of page 310. <speaking in Hebrew> Let's sing together. 
Thank you so much, Rabbi Hillel and Chazan Bretkay, for continuing to enable the members of our shul to stay connected throughout this pandemic. I wanted to share with you, my friends, a, uh, a relatively topical and perhaps even controversial view on, uh, on what is going on in the contemporary world. It's, I suppose, in place of my weekly sermon, what I'd ordinarily sink my teeth, th sink my teeth into something that's quite topical. Uh, and I want to do that to a broader audience rather than the maximum of 20 people that we can have in shul. 
Black Lives Matter is a, an international phenomenon as we speak. It's become a political movement. It's uh, existed for many years, but it has now re-emerged following the terrible uh, a tragedy that occurred or the atrocity that occurred a couple of weeks ago in, um, in America. But one of the offshoots of that particular movement has been the international protests going on in every major city around the world, including here in Melbourne. And it did raise the question about finding the balance between uh, legal protest under ordinary circumstances. So we're not talking about violence or looting. I think everyone agrees that that is wrong. But in terms of healthy, normal legal protests, there is on the one hand the need to be able to project our voices and express our frustrations and anger um, at a system that has let so many people down. But then uh, balanced with that is also the need to protect our society, protect the most vulnerable within our society, which are uh, some of them being the elderly and people with um, compromised immune systems from the pandemic. The core purpose of social distancing throughout the COVID-19 pandemic uh, was to ensure the safety of those who could otherwise um, catch the disease and, God forbid, succumb to it. Uh, how does one balance the, the need to protest with the need to remain healthy? And it's here that I believe that we can learn uh, from our teacher Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, from the Torah portion this week. In it, he is described as the most humble person who ever lived. Va'ish Moshe anav mikol adam adama. In what light lay Moses... Humility. What does it mean that he was a humble person? I mean, Moses was the greatest leader who ever lived in the Jewish world. He was the, uh, um, the, the great communicator of God's Torah to the Jewish people. He was the conduit through which God gave the Torah to the Jewish people. He was the leader that took us out of Egypt. He knew his greatness. He knew his fame. So how did he maintain a level of humility? And our sages explained that one of the reasons is because he was constantly focused on the needs of other people. He constantly prioritized the needs of others over his own needs and desires. And that's what endeared him to the people. That's what earned their respect. And that's the reason that Moses went down as one of the great leaders in history. It wasn't his intellect. It was his heart. It was the fact that he cared and thought about other people. And I think that if we extrapolate from that, uh, sometimes caring for other people means that we need to at least put on hold certain uh, desires or, or needs that we feel we need to express at any given time. Timing is really important. And whilst I understand that the, the issue overseas of um, systemic racism is one that affects so many different countries in so many different contexts, and my heart bleeds for that like everyone else's, but at the same time, it raises a serious question, at least in my mind, about the appropriateness and whether it's even justified to have mass protests of thousands and thousands of people who were clearly not social distancing, um, which could possibly and potentially lead to a second wave and something which has was against medical advice, putting aside the politicians and the political side to it, but the medical advice was clearly against um, congregating in, in these masses. Um, and it's difficult to, I guess, compute um, the notion of expressing care and solidarity with some people in the community but doing so potentially at the expense of the physical health of other people in our community. Um, and I just wonder whether, you know, protests, online protests or other forms of protest that didn't involve the, the physical congregating within close proximity one of another of so many thousands of people, which clearly flies in the face of everything we've been trying to achieve. And I know that there was criticism on the extreme measures of social distancing particularly here in Victoria, whether it was not being able to visit mum on mom, Mother's Day or not being able to go and have a round of golf. And I respect the, the logic and the rationale behind it, uh, even though I know many people disagreed with that. Um, but it is, in my view, difficult to comprehend, I guess, a, a different standard that has been applied with regard to mass pro protesting when it comes to a cause like this. I think that um, if we are indeed serious about saving lives, um, it, it really raises a strong moral and ethical question about whether it was justified, warranted, or even appropriate to have these types of mass gatherings, what type of message it communicates um, to the community where, I guess, you know, one, one particular experience that involves people coming together is not allowed and another one is allowed. I think that the cause is a strong one. But in my personal view, it does not justify and did not justify the mass protests. I hope and pray, please God, 
uh, that there will not be a further spike that resulted from it. Uh, I know uh, personally people in our own congregation who said, look, I, I was going to come to synagogue to shul, but now I, I want to wait another two weeks and see if there's going to be another wave as a direct result of this protest. So it does have broader ramifications. And I just hope and pray uh, that in the future, people can be more mindful of the approach of Moses, which was to be as strong as a person feels about something, always remember that other people exist on the planet as well. And sometimes our needs do not trump their needs. And sometimes, um, you know, the safety and well-being of other people has to be put first and foremost. And that really has been the driving force behind the success um, of the Australian response to the COVID-19 crisis. So that's my view. Very happy to hear contrary views. I look forward to chatting and discussing. Um, and in the meantime, I wish everyone a wonderful Shabbat. We are just about to light the Shabbat candles. I hope it brings peace, serenity and meaning uh, to your life and to the lives of your families over Shabbat. Um, and I look forward to continuing this conversation in due course. Have a wonderful Shabbat.